table? Yes. Of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today we're going to deal with a lesson dealing with the holy days. The title of the lesson is The Lord's Holy Days. The reason why um, I want to do this lesson is because we got some new people here and um, kind of give them a brief description of all the holy days and what they, uh, what we're supposed to do while we are um, observing those days. That's right. So we understand that these are not no days that you can play with. These days are very, very important to the Lord. Very important. If you understand his holy days, you'll understand the plan of God and what he was trying to do for his people, mm -hmm. which is recover Israel and protect Israel. But most people today inside of these churches don't understand that these are some very, very important days so you can understand that when this tribulation hit, when the, all these trumpets are blown, you understand what's going on, and you'll be in the right place at the right time. So I want to try to give a brief description on all of them, but when we're going to go in greater, uh, greater detail on those particular nights or days we have service. But we're going to deal with the Lord's holy days. We're going to turn to Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. To understand that these days are very important. And they are like Sabbath days. They are like days like today, where you just have a little different instructions in it, which is you can cook on God's high holy day and do minor little work to help out with the feast. But you can't work. It's just like the weekly Sabbath. Just like the weekly Sabbath. We don't work on them days. And the only day that we had, like I say, the Passover, which we're going to discuss in a little bit, about what you're supposed to do on that day. That's the only day you probably pretty much can work on that day. But the Passover falls on the Sabbath, so if you can't work anyway, it's time anyway. Hmm. So we're going to start in Leviticus chapter 23 and try to break these feet down so you can understand them. The more you understand these feet, the more you understand the plan of God for his people and how to recover his people. Come on, bro. So we, we want to understand. We don't want to just go in there and be playing church. We know what we're talking about. That's right. We're not just, I'm not, I don't have you here because I want you here. God wants us, wants us here. Leviticus chapter 23, we're going to start with verse 1. To give a brief description of all these feasts so we all know exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them yes, concerning the feast of the Lord, yes, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. The even these are my feasts. These are the Jews' feasts. No. These are yes. Jesus Christ's feasts. Amen. These are His feasts. Understand that you have a lot of people in the world thinking that it's a difference between what the Jews do. And what Christians do. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to be following these feasts. These are the Lord's feasts. So we understand that these are not the Jews' feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. This is what we're supposed to be observing. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done. Yes, sir. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So we're dealing with the weekly Sabbath first. That's a holy day. What we're observing today. Amen. A weekly Sabbath. Sorry, let me sit right here. We're dealing with a weekly Sabbath. So we got to understand that the feast of the Lord consists of the Holy Sabbath of the Sabbath of the weekly period, of the seven-day period on the seventh day, which is the world called Saturday. These are one of his feasts also. So we have to observe that. Go ahead. And the holy convocation, ye shall do no work therein. Mm -hmm. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. This is only in Jerusalem. No. So wherever you are, all nations, I don't care if you're in Jerusalem, China, Japan, or wherever, you're supposed to observe this day and remember it. And you're going to find out these days are very important to the Lord. Whoever remembers his days, he remembers them. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord. 
mm -hmm. even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. So we have a holy convocation, which is a church day. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to gather together. It's a commandment. That's right. It ain't that, okay, I can sit, there, sit down on the Sabbath day and watch it online, and then, you know, I can watch Bowie, I can watch Elijah, I can watch all these Hebrew Israelites say, I did my job. No, if you got a congregation in your time, you're supposed to gather together. That's a law. So he wants you to make sure you can, you gather together because we need each other to be here to show strength sometimes. That's right. Some of us are just like, okay, man, you know, it's okay. They know I'm there. And y'all know we have many people here. They understand all this stuff, but they choose to do other things. This is what God said about his holy day. His weekly Sabbath we're going to deal with first. Why we are here today. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 56 and we'll deal with the weekly Sabbath. And I'm going to show you how important it is. Don't take this lightly, y'all. Don't take it lightly. Because a lot of people take the Saturday lightly and say, you can choose a Sabbath. No, you can't choose no Sabbath. This is God's holy day. This is how he distinguished between who is his kids and who is Satan's kids. Period. Let's see how important these Sabbaths are to the Lord and how important it is for us to keep them. Isaiah 56, we'll start with verse 1. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. Yes, sir. For my salvation is near to come mm -hmm. and my, righteous, my righteousness to be revealed. He said, my salvation is near to come. Keep it. Keep the judgment. What's the one of the judgment? Go ahead. Blessed is the man that doeth this. Blessed is the man or woman that doeth this. Go ahead. And the son of man that layeth hold on it, uh -huh. that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hands from doing any evil. See, so you are blessed. This is the only way God can bless you if you keep your hands from polluting. How do you pollute? How we pollute it? We work on the Sabbath day, some of us. We go about and do our own little parties on the Sabbath day. We go about and have our own little fun going to the movie, washing your car, cooking, cleaning, all. Mm -hmm. This day is holy. You don't pollute it like that, period. Exactly. It's a rest day. Come on. You're supposed to get into the Word and rest your body. Come on. But people think, oh, we go to church for a couple of hours, or we go ahead and do whatever we want to do. Uh huh. That's what the Southern Church will tell y'all to do. That's what I was a part of for so many years. Mm -hmm. You find out how serious God is about this. Don't pollute it. And this is we deal with one this holiday, which is the weekly Sabbath. Go ahead. Neither let the son of the stranger mm -hmm. that has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Uh -huh. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold. I am a dry tree. God said this Sabbath is for everybody. When he says stranger, that means that you're not Israel. You're not Israel. But he said, don't even think you neglect it. I want you to come and do the Sabbath day too, and you'll get the blessing from it. Don't let these people fool you thinking that this is only for Israel. Go ahead. Verse 4. For thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath mm -hmm. and choose the things that please me. Yes, and sir. take hold of my covenant. So this is pleasing. He said, please me. When you don't pollute my Sabbath, when you come together on the holy day as we do on today and worship and read and do exactly what he said, when we don't do no work on the Sabbath day, when we don't hold our jobs on the Sabbath, it's pleasing to him. He got instructions now. In the church I was in, wasn't no instructions at all. Period. Right. Right. It was like, you go put your time in like you clocking in at a job on the Sunday for two hours. Bam, okay. We did that. Let's go do whatever we want to do. Smoke, drink, dance, have fun, bake parties and all this stuff like this. Oh, you don't do all that on the Sabbath day. And you'll find my other, in the other lesson, you don't even supposed to be killing the fire on the Sabbath day. You smoking on the Sabbath day. That's polluting. <coughs> Understand that. Go ahead. Verse 5. Even unto them will I give in my house. He going to work. He's going to give him in my house. He's going to give you a spot in his house. That's powerful, y'all. Y'all realize this, this right here. 
If you keep the Sabbath day, the week of the Sabbath, he promises something to us. Promise, that's promise of God. If you keep this day, I'm going to put a spot in my house for you. You got a spot in my house. Don't get confused with this world, y'all, and let them think that you're not supposed to be doing this. Go ahead. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Mm. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. You can, they will never cut you off. Meaning that you will always be in power. You will always be the first. You will always be the apple of God's eye. Yes. If you do this. But people are taking it so lightly and doing whatever. They get confused. Well, I ain't saying get confused. They get enticed by Satan. But all this stuff that's going on in the world with social media, with the cell phones, TV, and all this stuff. You got to calm yourself down and don't pollute this day. And it's a work. I have to work at it myself. Go ahead. Also, the sons of, of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. To be his servant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take it hold of my covenant. Go ahead. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Wait a minute. He said, I'm going to even bring the strangers. Yes. The ones that are not Israel. If they keep hold of this, you're going to come to his holy mountain. I'm going to bring you there. That's powerful. And people neglect this day and do whatever they want to own it this day. We're talking about the weekly Sabbath right now. Go ahead. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Yes, sir. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Mm -hmm. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. For all people. All right, Israelite brothers on the street, they all been talking about it just for Israel. It's for everybody. Exactly. If you obey the Sabbath, it's for everybody. Everybody. Go ahead, bro. The Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel yes, said, Yet will I gather others to him mm -hmm. besides those that are gathered unto him. So he's going to gather whoever who wants to take part in this Sabbath day and worship the way he say worship. Mm -hmm. It can be Israel, it can be China, it can be Ham, be all these different African nations. Anybody, anybody take on this, you can have the promises of God being in his house. This is how important it is for us not to pollute it. Mm -hmm. But we got to make sure we follow the instruction. This is the instruction. Mm -hmm. And we're just briefly doing it today. Let's go to Exodus chapter 31. Let me show you the flip side of it. If you don't keep it, <coughs> Exodus 31 and 12. <coughs> Same thing to play with y'all. I'm telling you. This our life depends on it. Our life this Saturday. This we talking about the week Saturday. For all of them on his Sabbath. It's our holy day. That's why we tired of this. The Lord how I mean the Lord holy day. So you understand what to do. You just be blind leading the blind, you just following your mom and dad. No, you know what to do. We read it. Hmm. Exodus 31, we'll start verse 12. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Yes, sir. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. For he said, Verily my Sabbath. Right. With an yes, S. Yes. Amen. You shall keep. You talking about all this high holy days of Sabbath. <coughs> Only what I can, can't say the Sabbath is the Passover because we're doing stuff on that day. But anyway, we break all this down. He said, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep. Why? Go ahead. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation. So God looking at me and you and seeing if we keep in this day or his high holy days, holy. He says it's a sign that you mind. You mind. But if you ain't keeping it, you ain't his. Mm. He gonna deal with you. Go ahead. That ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. Sanctify means that you set yourself apart. Set yourself apart from the rest of the people who are acting foolish in the world. When you follow the law, you're not a fool no more. Come on. You're not a fool. 
Go ahead. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Mm -hmm. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. See, I told you, man. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. See, he's going to put people to death. Play with it if you want to. Play with it. Back in the day, Israel used to put people to death. They find you picking up sticks on the Sabbath day and kill you. They find you doing anything that's polluting the Sabbath day, they will kill you. But God is doing the killing now. He's doing it. Why you think people get run up in churches shooting everybody? Or why you think people run up and have these bridges collapsing and all this stuff? This ain't about man. It's about God. When your time is up, your time is up. And most of these people in the world are not keeping this day holy. Go ahead. 15. Six days may work be done. Yes, sir. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Yes, sir. Holy to the Lord. It's holy to him. Do you, know, do you understand what that means? It's very special. Just think about that. Just think about one thing in your life that you hold very special to you. That's how God holds his day. Very special. Some people have a special day like birthdays. All these people who are at Christmas, Thanksgiving, very special to them. God said, this day is special to me because it's pointing toward the future if you understand the <coughs> thousand year race. He wants us to get us mind conditioned to understand what we're supposed to be doing. He's not going to have nobody that foolish of his word run his kingdom. No, he got to know and look at your mind and say, he or she actually understand what I'm talking about. Only you can put yourself in or take yourself out mm -hmm. by your mind. Don't fake the fault with me. Don't fake the fault with nobody. Because God see y'all here, y'all ain't know all. And he's looking in our minds. Go ahead. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Y'all see how serious this is? He's going to put you to death. This is what it is. But people like run across the word like, okay. Ain't no e exceptions for people. We understand that people work and they're trying to work their way and get it right. Don't get me wrong now. Don't take away you got to do this thing cold turkey. God sees that you're trying. Everybody. But he knows the one that ain't trying. Mm -hmm. They about their bread. Uh-uh. I got to take a job. It got to be 20000 better for me to take that seven dollars If you got those conditions, you lost. Tell you. You got to take the pay cut. I did a lesson on that. Take the pay cut. We all, I took the pay cut, he took the pay cut. We all took it. I could be doing more than what I'm doing right now if I wanted to. I had big dreams, big ideas. Amen, bro. But I'm looking at this law. I'm like, God, I can't do that. Go ahead. Verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. That means it's ongoing. As long as there are Israelites upon this land, or, or children of Israel upon the land, it got to be kept. No question is that. It's always going to be Israelite here, all the way until the coming of the Lord. There's going to be Israelites in the kingdom of Jesus. So you got this perpetual meaning, ongoing, don't stop. Why? Go ahead. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So it's a sign. God said, look, them my kids right there, they told what I told them to do. They keep in the Sabbath. I'm going to protect them. But when you ain't here, you go do whatever you want to do. He's going to put you to death. That's why you see little kids dying. That's why you see young folk dying. That's why you see all this stuff banging because they're not keeping the law. And we're dealing with the holy day right now. One day. Now, when you start understanding the law, you'll you start understanding death. You won't look at that and say, well, dog, no, it was so young. Well, I, I, when I see young people die, I say, I wonder how they violated God's law. I wonder what they disobedient to their parents. I wonder did they violate the Sabbath. I wonder all this stuff, how their life got cut, cut short. Because God said, I promise you three score and ten and seventy years. He promised you that. Go ahead. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Yes, sir. And on the seventh day he rested. And was refreshed. So the Lord rested. Why are you ain't resting on the seventh day? He rested. But you talking about you love Jesus and you show up every Sunday. 
Man, you don't love Jesus. You love that other Jesus Paul talked about. He that Jesus over was Sunday. How they fool people and think that Jesus was resurrected up on the Sunday? Mm -hmm. That was a lie. Yes. He died in the middle of the week. Yes. Amen. Which is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he resurrected on the Sabbath. Do it right now. But the Sabbath was here way before man was created. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> and he gave unto Moses, and and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion yes, sir. with him upon Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. So who wrote this? Did Moses wrote this? No. no. Every tell you this is more old Mosaic law. It said God wrote this with his finger. Don't let fool, people fool you so that Moses law, that Moses law. No, Moses ain't writing no law. Moses wrote a law down with because God told him what to write. <laughs> In the other scriptures. Let's go to Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. Let's see if our Lord and Savior kept, kept the Sabbath. You these people out here saying that they are Christians and they ain't even following Christ. They not doing what Christ told them to do. Oh, I'm a Christian. You can't tell me I ain't a Christian. But if you're a Christian, do what Jesus did. He kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He kept it. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, excuse me. So we understand it about his holy days. And we're dealing with the weekly Sabbath. That's one of his holy days. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Yes, sir. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Mm -hmm. So we're talking he, about Jesus, right? right? Let's see what Jesus did. Go ahead. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. He taught in what? Synagogue, meaning churches. That's right. What did he teach? Go ahead. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So Jesus followed his own law? Where you get Sunday from? Where you get Sunday worship from? Who told you that? I can tell you who told you that. Go to history. Emperor Constantine told you that. In 321 AD, a Roman ruler by the name Emperor Constantine was a sun worshiper. He worshiped the sun in the sky. That's why he named the first day of the week Sunday. Amen. If he found you not worshiping on the Sunday, he will kill you. So a lot of the Israelites started converting over so they would die. This is how this stuff started. But they tell you inside the church, Jesus will resurrect on, on the Sabbath day. You a lie? Read it, tell me. It ain't in here. I mean, Sunday, excuse me. Like, he will resurrect on, on the Sunday. The first day of the week. You know, a lot of you can't read. This is what we understand. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. Let me get Paul on the form. Because they love Paul. Let's see what day he worship on. Some people think Paul was over Jesus. Well, Paul said it a different way. Oh, did he? Let's see. Acts 13. Dealing with the, with the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath, the holy day. First, we're going to deal with the rest of them. Acts chapter 13, verse 13. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, uh -huh. they came to Perga uh -huh. in Pamphylia, and John departed uh -huh. from them, returned to Jerusalem. So, we're dealing with Paul now. Let's see what he did on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. But when they departed from Perga, mm -hmm. they came to Antioch, Pasita, mm -hmm. and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So it's sounded like what Jesus did. Now Jesus been dead a long time ago now. This Paul right here. What he did? Go ahead. 15. Okay. And after the reading of the law, and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue, 
sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. This is what he said, after reading the law. What law? The Old Testament. This is what they were reading. Hmm. Well, they tell us, no, the old book is done away. It's new now. Ain't nothing new. Only thing new is, you dumb. You dumb according to the scripture. That new you. That's new. You don't really know what you need to know as being a pastor for 30 some years in the church. You don't understand that God died, Jesus died in the middle of the week and resurrected on the Sabbath day. And you telling people that this is why we hold Easter, this is why we hold uh, a resurrection Sunday. Where do you get that stuff from? You got it from the Council of Nicaea. That's where you get it from. The Romans. But well, Paul followed the Sabbath. Jesus followed the Sabbath. Why aren't you following the Sabbath, Sunday preacher? Hmm. Let's keep moving. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. Let's see if we're going to keep the Sabbath in, the, uh, in Jesus' kingdom after the first resurrection. Now they think once Jesus comes back, all this stuff is going to be done. We're going to have to do this one more. You're going to have to still keep this law. Get comfortable with it. You better know it. So you have an opportunity to be in the first resurrection. Because mm -hmm. he choosing as we speak now. Isaiah chapter 66, we're going to start verse 22. Let's see. And we know this is future because he's going to say something right in his first verse 22. Go ahead. For as the new heavens and the new earth, mm -hmm. which I will make, Mm -hmm. Shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. So he made a new heaven and a new earth. This is something way newer in the future. Future. Let's see what's going down. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, mm -hmm. and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, says the Lord. So we still keeping the Sabbath day in Jesus' kingdom. From one new moon to another. This is how we calculate the holy days. We find out the first moon in the spring. And we count in 14 days of the first month. We ain't talking about January now. We talking about the new year. This is how we can, that's why he said from one new moon to the next. You have to find the moon to do the calculation of God's calendar. Not January. You ain't, we ain't celebrating the God of Janus. This is why they have this New Year thing to open and close the door. This is celebrating the God of Janus. Another God. We celebrate the God of Israel who looking at them, who knows that his seasons or his, his time start when the new moon hit in the springtime. This is how we know the beginning of the month. Read verse of 23 again. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another mm -hmm. and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, says the Lord. This is when Jesus is on the throne. All flesh going to have to come up to Jerusalem. Everybody upon this earth is going to have to come up when he says come up. But if you ain't keeping the Sabbath now, how you going to get an opportunity? <laughs> you can't. He's going to kill you. He gonna kill me. I ain't beat myself out. I don't have a shoe in. I'm trying to work it every day. Make sure I keep myself in line. God, because I can lose my salvation at any time and turn my back against God. I ain't so special. Nobody's special. So we gotta make sure we stay in this book. And the Sabbath day is really, really, really important. We can the Sabbath so we can learn. So we charge us up for the next six days. So people think they can go without reading this book. You are on E, according to the word of God. You empty. Yes. You ain't going nowhere. All you're doing is running around the circle. Mm. So let's all say you got to go on to the end today. It's a meaning to that. That's all these people doing in the earth. They run around the circle. Keep hitting that brick wall. Bam, bam, bam. Same on the same results. Get in the book. Let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23. We still dealing with the Holy Day, but I got to lay a little foundation. Man, if you come up here and think you're going to learn this stuff in a year, you can't learn it in a year. Mm -hmm. It took me about five or six years just to get a 
grass on it. And I and I'm still learning. Don't feel don't feel like you are uh, uh, dumb in the scriptures. We all been there. But it's gonna depend on you to work and study. Not just close your book about the seventh day and go about your merry business. Work and read it. So God chooses. Leviticus chapter 23. We'll start in verse 4. 